Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Alexis Stevens, a board certified dermatologist with a background in cosmetic chemistry. I bring all of my knowledge to you so that you can make the best choices when making skincare decisions. Today we're talking all about pores and specifically one of the most common questions I get asked in the clinic, which is how can I decrease my pores? Doc, what can I do to minimize my pores or shrink my pores? My answer is always, my friend, you cannot shrink your pores, but you can undoubtedly minimize the appearance of your pores, and that's what we're talking all about today. We're gonna to be reviewing very popular brands, Ordinary versus The Inky List, because those are the brands that everyone is using right now to minimize their pores, and for good reasons. They're very affordable, and they're very accessible. So we're gonna compare which kits. This one comes as a kit, but The Ordinary you can make as a kit. Which one is best for you? Which one can truly minimize your pores the most? Or if you have certain skin conditions, which one would be better for you to choose from? Before we get into Inky List versus The Ordinary as far as which ones will help to minimize your pores, let's talk about pores very briefly as to why they even look enlarged to begin with. So what is your pore? It's actually the channel or tube that leads to your oil glands. Now this is a two-way street. It's a road that goes back and forth because oil also gets exerted through the surface of your skin through the oil glands. So the most important thing to know is your oil glands and your pores are connected to one another. So it's very important that whatever you do, you're actually targeting both things. Additionally, it's all connected to a hair follicle. So it's also important to know that if you suffer from things like folliculitis, these tips can help you. All right, so now let's just get straight into which products would be better for you to minimize your pores. First thing we have to talk about whenever we're talking about pores and oil regulation is niacinamide, vitamin B3. Guys, if you've seen any of my videos, in fact, if you've watched any other YouTuber videos that talks about skincare, you know the benefits of vitamin B3 or niacinamide. It is fantastic at oil regulation. It's also good for hyperpigmentation, anti-inflammatory, decreasing redness on your skin, and just giving your skin a nice brightening effect. It's also good for hydration because it increases your ceramide levels. So I'm not gonna go off on a tangent about niacinamide. I have a whole nother video about the beauty and wonders of niacinamide if you wanna check it out. But let's just talk about it today in the context of oil regulation. It is fantastic at regulating the oils that are actually produced within the glands of your skin. Super important if you have enlarged pores because the more that your pore is actually full of oil, the larger it is going to look on the surface of your skin. So when it comes to Ordinary versus Inky List for the niacinamide, I'm actually going to recommend for you to use the Ordinary's Niacinamide if you are someone who is not wearing a lot of makeup. The reason is because the Ordinary's Niacinamide can really peel on your skin. If you've noticed that you've put Ordinary on and then you put your makeup on and you feel like you've got some peeling, it just doesn't sit well, it is either because you didn't wait a long enough period of time or the makeup that you're actually using doesn't sit well with The Ordinary. I find that the Inky List kind of negates that whole issue and it just goes on very well. It absorbs into the skin beautifully and you can wear makeup without worrying about it peeling. So the reason that I'm gonna choose the Inky List is if you are wearing a lot of makeup. The reason I would choose The Ordinary is if you're not really worried about having to apply makeup on, it's a little bit less expensive. They're actually the exact same concentration of 10% of niacinamide, so that's not really a consideration. So when it comes to the niacinamides, the efficacy of both are proven. Their strength, their percentage, all proven to be equal. It really just comes down to whether or not you are wearing makeup. If you're wearing makeup, you're gonna go with the Inky List because it just goes on more flawlessly. Your makeup will go on smooth. You don't have to worry about peeling. If you're going with the Ordinary, that is because you're not really worried about makeup and you can save a little bit of money. Also, it's formulated with zinc, which helps to stabilize and also helps with oil production. Next up, let's talk about retinol. Retinol is super important when we're talking about pores and regulating pore size or trying to minimize the appearance of pores because retinols actually get rid of that dead skin cell. Another reason that pores look large is because they're full of dead skin cells or keratin. Super normal, nothing wrong with it. Of course, you can get rid of dead skin cells by exfoliating, but important that you can also get rid of dead skin cells 
with retinol because it helps the rapid cell turn over rate. Now, when it comes to comparing Inky List versus the Ordinary for the retinols, it gets a little bit tricky because the Inky List retinol is not quite straightforward in its percentage. It says that it is a retinol of 1%, but when you look at the back, which I caution you should always do with every product you buy, the numbers don't quite add up. They have two different types of retinols listed and the percentages don't quite come to 1%. I dive deep when it comes to looking at ingredients and the math on this one doesn't quite add up for me. So when you're looking at a retinol, you want it to actually work. You want that cell turnover to be occurring. You want to get rid of dead skin cells and important, it also does many other things. Again guys, my background prior to becoming a dermatologist is in cosmetic chemistry. So I really look at the back of products before I recommend anything to you and of course before I use anything on myself. So the back of the retinol of the Inky List, it just really didn't make a lot of sense. And I tried to do a little bit more digging. I went on the website to try and get a little bit more information and all of the research that I came up with still didn't add up to the numbers. So because of that, I'm gonna give this one to The Ordinary because their percentages make sense to me. Um, it's pretty straightforward when you look at the back of the retinol of The Ordinary. So I'm gonna choose The Ordinary on this one simply for mathematic reasons, transparency in the numbers, and just the overall customer satisfaction when it comes to retinols. So why do you need the retinol anyway? It helps with the structure of the pore. So pores elasticity is important. It's a tube, right? So the floppier that tube is, the more it can look expanded and enlarged. The whole thing is that we want to minimize the appearance of the pores. So the tighter it is, the smaller it appears, and that happens when you have really good structure holding it up retinols can help with this structure. So I would go with a retinol that has been proven to work, that the math adds up on. Um, and so again, I'm giving it to the ordinary for this one. So because I'm not loving the Inky List retinol, I wanted to give you another alternative if you wanted to stick with just the Inky List because you don't love the way that the ordinary feels on your skin if you're wearing makeup. The Inky List does have Bakuchia. This has been scientifically proven to mimic a retinol, and it also has a lot of benefits that salicylic acid has. There's been a pretty good amount of studies showing that it is both as efficacious as retinol and salicylic acid when it comes to clearing out the pores. So something that you may want to consider if you wanted to stick with the Inky List and you didn't love their retinol for the reasons that I just listed. Another really important ingredient when you're thinking and considering minimizing the pores, it's going to be beta hydroxy acid or salicylic acid because BHAs is pretty much salicylic acid. But make sure that you're using a concentration of 2% because when we're talking about keratinolytics, so we're talking in the context of minimizing your pores, getting rid of oil, clearing out debris, we want 2% because 2% salicylic acid is what's going to do that for you. It's going to clear out your pores, it's going to minimize de debris, it's going to clear out the oil that's in there. If you get a BHA or salicylic acid that is less than 2%, so like the 0.5, the 1%, that's actually more geared towards anti-inflammatory properties, which is fantastic for acne. But when we're actually focusing on pores and oil regulation, we want it to be 2%. So this BHA, is a really great one at doing that. But when we're comparing the Ordinary to the Inky List, they're actually both 2%. The difference being that the Inky List does have salicylic acid plus 1% hyaluronic acid. In this instance, hyaluronic acid is actually going to help the salicylic acid penetrate more, it's at 1%. It's also going to help to hydrate the skin as long as you follow it up with a moisturizer. So which one do I actually recommend for you? Again, it comes down to whether or not you are wearing makeup because the Inky List salicylic acid goes on very nicely, does not cause any issues with paling or making your skin feel kind of icky when the makeup is on. And the Ordinary can do that just because of the consistency of the salicylic acid. So for this one, it really just depends on your lifestyle. What are you doing and putting on the skin after you're done with that salicylic acid? 
So because sebaceous glands are most numerous in the T-zone, meaning across the forehead and down the center of the face, this is where people find that their oil glands are the most prominent or their pores are the most prominent. This is because they're actually 10 times more numerous than other portions of the body. So this is the area that you definitely want to focus on if you are going to try and spot treat or use one of these treatments to minimize your pores, though they can be used all over the face. So next in this kit of the Poor Wonders from the Ikki List, they have squalene and they have it completely separately. Now squalene from the Ikki List and squalene from the Ordinary are pretty much identical. This one again is going to depend on whether or not you are wearing makeup. I find this one to be a bit of an interesting ingredient because while squalene is an emollient, meaning that it makes the skin feel smoother, it makes the skin feel more hydrated. It can kind of go into little crevices of the skin and just smooth it out. It can be a little controversial when you're coming to an acne type of patient because our body naturally produces squalene, which is more prominent in acne prone patients because it's more prominent in oil glands. So if you're acne suffering and you're also trying to minimize your pores, I would stay away from this ingredient with both companies. I think they have it in here because it's a good moisturizer, but it doesn't do a lot for your acne prone patients. It, not a lot of research saying you shouldn't use it with acne, but just in theory and principle when you think about it from a dermatologist standpoint and from a cosmetic chemist standpoint, it's probably not going to be the best for your acne patients. However, if you're just trying to minimize your pores and you're looking for a good moisturizer, it is a fantastic choice. So squalene is really great for moisturizing the skin. Again, it's an emollient. The other thing that it's very good for is just giving an overall smooth effect. When you have enlarged pores, you definitely want to be moisturizing your skin and squalene is a good choice to do that with. Moisturizing your skin is going to send a signal to your cells that you don't need to overproduce oil. The theoretically should help you with overproduction of oil because you're actually placing moisture on your skin. Your body doesn't feel the need to make so much moisture on its own. So when it comes to the squalene from Ordinary or the Inky List, I'm going to say, <laughs> surprise, surprise, it depends on whether or not you're wearing makeup. Uh, the squalene from the Ordinary is a little bit stickier and so it doesn't go on as flawlessly if you have makeup on. Whereas the one from the Inky List plays a little bit nicer with makeup. So again, this one is dependent. However, the little disclaimer that I made about not wanting to use squalene if you are acne prone, just to be cautious, there is a little bit of it formulated with the retinol of the ordinary, and I would not be worried about that. It's actually a pretty low concentration, and anytime it's formulated with a retinol, that can actually be so drying that the squalene can be quite helpful there. So I would not worry about it being in your retinol. I think it's actually a good thing in that particular incidence. And just some poor tips in general, guys. If you're really wanting to minimize the appearance of your pores, the most important thing you could do is to stop manipulating your skin. Poking at your skin, squeezing at pimples, using pore strips, all change the architecture of your pore. Remember we talked about the architecture being really important. You don't wanna mess with that. The more that you squeeze, the more you're gonna stretch your skin out, you're gonna change the elasticity of your pore. It's gonna become more floppy and therefore more visible because it's going to be more open. The structure won't be quite as intact. So no squeezing, no pore strips, no pulling at your skin. Be kind and be gentle. Your pores will thank you. Another important thing to remember is to avoid what I call the CIOs. So coconut oil, isopropyl myristate, which can be found in a lot of products, olive oil and oil cleansers. This goes for balm cleansers too. So you wanna make sure that you're avoiding your CIOs. There has been some evidence that chemical sunscreens can actually be more comedogenic, meaning clog your pores, more so than the mineral sunscreens. So if you're really worried about this, look for a mineral sunscreen like titanium or zinc. Make sure that your sunscreen includes ingredients like niacinamide. My favorite one is Elta MG because it's got your sunscreen in there, which is mineral based and it also includes a little niacinamide. And if you're really trying to up your pore and brighten skin game, I would say to make sure that your diet is on point too. A lot of things that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and make sure that you have a good amount of vitamin A in your diet. 
Not an over amount of vitamin A, but just a good decent amount. Vitamin A certainly does have its benefits in decreasing oil production. It is the main ingredient in things like Accutane, which is no longer on the market, but there's other names like Clavaris, Absorbica, Myrcin, or the generic isotretinoin. That is a very high derivative of vitamin A, which certainly will decrease the oil production and minimize your pores. Now you don't need to go using this medication if you're simply just looking for the benefit of minimizing your pores, but I would definitely consider upping your vitamin A naturally in your diet. So you can take a multivitamin that has vitamin A in there. Make sure that your diet is rich in other ingredients that have vitamin A, like sweet potatoes. Just a quick tip about makeup, if you are indeed struggling with pores that appear to be larger than normal and you're wearing longer wear makeup, this may actually be the culprit. Consider switching to a cream base or a foundation that actually has a matte finish. There are a lot of companies that can help with this. You wanna to switch to a company that is advertising their product as non-comedogenic, as this can greatly help. Also, blotting sheets can be your best friend if you're someone who wears makeup and feels that they are oily throughout the day. I'll make sure to list some references down below for you. Right, Nai Nai? Yeah. yeah. Right, Nai Nai? Yeah. Ethan agrees too. <laughs> this is the crew, so if you hear anyone in the background, it's this two crazies. These are my kids. This is Ethan and Nyla. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Crazy bunch we are here. So overall, the Ordinary is actually less expensive than the Inky List when it comes to the products that we just talked about for minimizing your pores. I'll put the prices here. However, when you are wearing makeup, I would highly recommend you go with the Inky List over the Ordinary simply because your makeup is gonna go on so much smoother, you're gonna have a lot less frustration with peeling of products and feeling like you have to start all over. If you're someone who does not wear makeup, you can actually go with the Ordinary, save a little bit of money, and minimize the appearance of your pores. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Please let me know what kind of videos you want me to make next and happy pore minimizing. Until next time, be well.